Hello all, my name is Yash and in this video, we'll learn about the coroutine scopes. Now what are the coroutine scopes? So whenever we try to run a coroutine, we need a scope. We cannot run a coroutine without any scope. There are different scopes in coroutine. We're gonna cover the most important ones in this video. So yeah, let's get started. So before starting this, obviously we need the dependency of the coroutine. Let's go to the Gradle file. And we have this dependency already added from the previous video if you have seen. So if you have seen the previous video, we already have this dependency added. And I've also added this new dependency. This is uh, related to the lifecycle scope of the coroutines, uh, which we will learn about this later in this video itself. So as of now, I have commented this. We don't need it as of now, but after a few minutes, uh, we'll use this. So I'll tell you about this. So as of now, I'm commenting this. This is the one which we needed right now. Make sure you have added this dependency. Now let's get back to the main activity. Now, what is global scope? So global scope is something which uh, will be act on a global level of your application. So first thing first, we cannot uh, launch a core routine without a scope. So there has to be a scope while launching a core routine. Either it is an, on application level, on a class level, on an activity view model, anything, but there has to be a scope. So this global scope is something which will act on an application level. So whatever the core routine we are launching with the help of this global scope keyword, will gonna be active until unless your application is active. So let me tell you how this works. So to give you the more practical example of this global scope, I'll create one more activity. Let's go to this activity, empty activity, and let it be main activity too. What we will do is, we will launch here one global scope dot launch now this core routine will gonna be on the global level that is on application level global level i mean in application level and what is application level if something is launching in the application level that will gonna be there till the time the application is there so this particular global scope dot launch will not destroy it or will not stop even if this main activity finishes let me tell you why this is bad let's suppose this is a profile activity or something else activity where, where or any other activity where basically we need a few data from the API. Now, whenever we are opening this activity, we need that data. Otherwise, we don't need that data and we don't want to waste our resources on that data, obviously, because we don't need that. Whenever any user opens this activity, so this uh, core routine will gonna launch. This will gonna hit the API and get the data from the API. And we can show that data in the UI. That's the purpose of it. That is working fine completely. Now. What if the user presses the back button? So if user presses the back button, then this profile activity or the current activity will gonna be destroyed obviously, but this global scope core routine will not gonna be destroyed. This will be active because it is at the application level and application is not destroyed yet. Only this activity got destroyed. That is the reason why we are not supposed to use this until unless we have a strong use case that, that something is needed at the application level. Now let's see the practical example of it. So I've written this global scope dot launch. I'll create one infinite loop and I'll make the delay of one second and I'll try to print the log of, uh, let's suppose this is my main activity, global scope running. And let's also override the on destroy method so that I can show you that this main activity got destroyed. Now we have to call this activity from this activity. So, so for the sake of time, I'll just uh, apply the click listener on this text view itself. I'm not gonna make a button. So we don't need to implement the data binding as of now. And here we're gonna start the activity and here we're gonna start the main activity. Okay, I haven't specified the intent. Okay, so now I'm gonna run this application and let's see in the logcat what happens. So this is my, this is the first activity. Now we, when we click on this button, we will gonna redirect it to this activity. So as we can see, main activity is running here. Uh, let's apply the filter for more clarity. So you, we can see global scope is running. Uh, you can see here, it is running. 
this means that we have launched the coroutine under the global scope dot launch and it is running now properly now if i'll press the back button let's see what happens this activity got destroyed as we have printed the destroyed here on the on destroyed method so this got printed so this got printed but the global scope is still running now let's try to press the back button again and see it is still running even though the application is not even in the foreground now if i'll kill the application from the background then only it will stop running so as you can see it stopped running this is how global scope works so if you want to use this global scope in the project then there should be a strong use case of it so running anything in the application level on a permanent basis is a costly approach so we should only do this if there is no other choice for us now what's the alternative of this so let me tell you we have this dependency in the gradle which we have commented i'll on uncomment it now this is a life cycle scope now what is life cycle scope so ideally how this coroutine should work this coroutine should work whenever i'm entering into this activity and whenever this activity is getting destroyed i don't want this coroutine to work after this activity got destroyed i ideally want this coroutine to get destroyed so let's replace this global scope with the life cycle scope so this is the life cycle scope and let's rename this as well so now this life cycle scope will going to be active till the time this main activity is active which is the ideal behavior right i want the data when i'm entering into that screen and whenever i'm exiting from that screen i don't want that data that should be the ideal behavior in most of the cases now let's try to run this again and check the behavior okay i'm entering into the second activity see life cycle scope is also started running because we have entered this activity now let's press the back button this activity got destroyed and now you can see that life cycle scope is not running so this is a very efficient way of using coroutines so that's how this life cycle scope works and there's also one view model scope so if you are aware of mvvm uh, architecture there's there's something called as view model so if you are working in the view model so if you are working in the view model it has a different life cycle so we have a different coroutine scopes specially made for the view models which is known as view model scope so for that you will need a different dependency for view model scope you can easily add the dependency here and you can simply use the view model scope inside the view model so that particular coroutine which will gonna launch through view model scope will gonna be active till the time that view model is active so this is how these coroutine scope works so i hope you have got to learn something new in this video in the further videos we'll learn more about uh, the various ways of launching the coroutine and how to handle the exceptions in the coroutine which is a very crucial topic in this i'll try my best to teach you coroutines in a easiest way possible stay tuned in this series i'll see you in the further videos